National Manufacturing Policy of 2011 has envisaged the setting up of dedicated national investment and manufacturing zones to bring together modern infrastructure, technology, skill development centers, and state-of-the-art connectivity to become the nuclei of manufacturing growth. I expect the manufacturing MSME units to take full advantage of this initiative. The growth potential of MSME units should not be impeded by lack of access to financial resources. There is a need to increase the reach and coverage of the financial institutions by expanding branch network to locations near industrial clusters. Our capital market is an important resource raising medium for our business. The small and medium enterprise exchange <coughs> platform launched by the National Stock Exchange and Bombay Stock Exchange would allow small and medium enterprises <coughs> to access to the capital market to raise the necessary resources for them. This will also help diversify risk in these enterprises by widening the investor base. Potential of knowledge-based industries in India is very high. To facilitate their growth, increased access to alternative sources of capital like private equity, venture capital, and angel funds should be made possible. It is gratifying to note that our efforts of easing the flow of credit to the MSME sector have continued unabated. Union budget of 2013-14 has envisaged doubling the refinance capacity of the Small Industries Development Bank of India to rupees 10,000 crore per year and setting up a rupees 500 crore corpus with the bank to facilities upscaling of factoring services. I am also happy to note that the Indian Manufacturers Equity Fund, which was set up in 2011-12 with a budgetary support of 100 crores to assist the microfinance institutions by provision of equity, is being allocated an additional amount of Rs. 100 crores. Ladies and gentlemen, our future progress will be determined largely by the level of technology that will drive our economy. Innovation and technology provides the competitive edge that our industrial sector at large and MSME sector in particular should not be deprived of. We must aim at developing relevant technologies to re-engineer manufacturing process, reduce costs, improve turnaround time and enhance product quality. For that, the industry and academy and research institutions should collaborate to identify and find solutions to existing technological gaps. Tool rooms and technology development centers have been found useful in providing technology and design support to MSME units. There is a need to replicate such efforts. I am therefore pleased to note that 15 such centers are being set up during the 12th plan period at a cost of Rs. 2,200 crores. This decade is the decade of innovation. Our drive towards innovation must benefit the bottom of the socio-economic pyramid. There are many cutting-edge innovations that due to lack of technological and commercial support remain denied of the development into marketable products. Institutional mentoring of grassroots innovators would go a long way in taking the benefits of technology closer to the people. I am hopeful that the Indian Inclusive Innovation Fund being envisaged would create a new class of entrepreneurs by building an economic model around the needs and problems of the poor. 
Ladies and gentlemen, the demographic profile of our nation is likely to change in the times to come. By 2025, two-third Indians will be in the working age bracket. This is both a challenge and an opportunity. We have to gainfully employ our working population to ensure that their contribution to national progress is unearthed to the fullest extent. To stimulate employment creation, healthy industrial relations and capacity building mechanism are a must. Our strategies must focus on upgradation of our technical institutes, both in terms of quality and quantity. Setting up of more technical institutes to cater to the increasing demand and skill development of our manpower to equip them with the relevant expertise and know-how. The legal entitlements of our country's workforces must be aimed at greater employment generation. Our labor laws should be able to address the contemporary business models and reflect the pragmatic rights and obligations of the employer and the employees. Our MSME units can prosper only if there is a concerted effort of widening the market for their products. On account of the scale of operation, most of these units are not capable of individual initiatives in marketing, brand building, and promotion. Public Procurement Policy for the Micro and Small Enterprises 2012, which mandates union government, ministries, and public sector undertakings to procure at least 20% of their annual purchases from the micro and small enterprises would address the marketing concerns of this se sector to a great extent. But more importantly, market development assistance, trade fairs, packaging technology, barcoding, and standardization should be strengthened through the joint efforts of the government and industry associations. Ladies and gentlemen, close to 95% of the MSME units are micro-enterprises that employ around 69% of the total MSME workforces. Most of the micro-enterprises operate in the unorganized sector and require the substantive support for their growth. The categorization of MSME units on the single criteria of investment in plant and machinery or equipment, ceiling of rupees 10 crores, 5 crores, and 25 lakhs for medium, small, and micro enterprises, respectively, in manufacturing sector, and 5 crores, 2 crores, and 10 lakhs for those classes of units in service sector, is perhaps necessary to channelize the requisite dose of incentives. But we must be watchful that this does not become disincentives for, from growing beyond the threshold. Growth of firms is best achieved if allowed to grow unfettered. Perhaps a calibrated approach to the growth of the MSME units may be prudent for the long term. The private sector must be active participants in the process of rejuvenation of the MSME sector. Their partnership in creating a friendly business environment, especially by skill development, product promotion, and technology development, will pave the way for our MSME units to compete successfully with the best in the world. I once again take this opportunity of congratulating all the award winners and hope that their success would inspire millions of small entrepreneurs working diligently through the length and breadth of the country. I conclude by reminding you the famous observations once Abraham Lincoln made. I quote, always bear in mind that your own resolution to succeed is more important than any other thing." Unquote. Thank you. 
जय हिंद